burner. Planned shutdowns may be done when a furnace is taken out of service for scheduled maintenance or repairs. Or perhaps when there's a unit turnaround. That is, when the entire unit is shut down for maintenance or repair work. A planned shutdown may also be performed if there are problems or upsets in other unit processes, even though the furnace may be running okay. The objective of a planned shutdown is basically the opposite of a startup. That is, you want to bring the temperatures and the firing rate down gradually. In general, this is done by turning off the burners one at a time and then turning off all the pilots at once. During shutdown, when furnace temperatures are lowered, the refractory and metal parts in the furnace contract. Slowly decreasing the temperatures will reduce the chances that parts of the furnace will be damaged from cooling and contracting too quickly. Planned shutdown sequences are not exactly the same in all cases, but a lot of the important major steps are common to most furnaces. If automatic control systems are in operation, they may be switched to manual. This gives the furnace operators more direct control over the firing rate as the temperatures are lowered. The fuel flow to the burners can be reduced slowly to bring down the process fluid outlet temperature. The operator keeps his eye on the fuel pressure to make sure it doesn't drop too fast. Reducing the fuel pressure slowly helps decrease the outlet temperature gradually. Can you think of another reason why you don't want the fuel pressure to drop too fast? If fuel pressure drops too fast, there's a risk of flameouts. That is, the burners may go out too soon, leaving unburned fuel in a hot furnace, a dangerous explosive condition. When the outlet temperature has dropped a predetermined amount, the outside operator is told to shut off the first burner. He does this by closing the burner's isolation valve. When the outlet temperature has dropped by another predetermined amount, the control room operator gives the go-ahead to take out another burner. The burners are turned off in a staggered pattern to keep the heat evenly distributed in the furnace during the shutdown. For this furnace, when the last burner is turned off, isolation valves on either side of the flow control valve are closed manually to prevent fuel from leaking into the furnace. Then the isolation valves for the burner pilots can be turned off. After the last pilot is out, the main fuel supply for the pilots is turned off. Often, the process fluid is kept flowing for a while after the burners are off. Circulating fluid carries heat away from the furnace, which allows for a more controlled cool down. The pump for the process fluid is shut off, and the valves that regulate the process fluid flow are closed according to shutdown procedures. Sometimes the process fluid is removed from the tubes at shutdown. If the fluid contains carbon or coke, the inside of the tubes may have to be cleaned and decoked. Carbon deposits in the tubes may create heat transfer and flow problems. In this system, valves route steam and air through the process fluid lines to burn off the carbon deposits and carry them out of the lines. The fuel lines and the process fluid lines may have to be blinded as well. And with many furnaces, it's standard practice to purge the furnace again after it is cooled down. 